M. Nairobi. Our conversation with Dr. Mary Nyamongo continues uh, as we talk about poverty, uh, health, and all, and the link between that city. Mm. Who was Joseph of Arimathea? <laughs> Joseph yeah. was this guy yeah. when Jesus was walking to that place mm. called Golgotha. Mm. Okay? Mm. He told him, Hold. Mm. This thing's a bit heavy. Mm. Let me help you carry it. Mm. And he helped him carry it. Carried the cross. That was Joseph. Uh -huh. Yes. Do you know Joseph of Kafete? Joseph. Mm. Joseph of Kabete. Joseph of Kabete is somebody who is now in the loop. Okay? Is he now? Joseph has downloaded the loop app and he has started getting into the lifestyle of loop. And Joseph yesterday sent us a screenshot of a transaction on loop. Took a screenshot, sent it to us on our social media. And just because of that, he's getting 2,500 shillings into that account. Hibo. Immediately. Immediately. Joseph of? Kabete. Kabete. Mm. That's the guy. So do you want to get 2,500 today? Well, you can do that. Just transact with Loop. So send us a screenshot of your transaction. Do whatever. There are very many download things that you can do. Fact, just even download, download the, app. the app. Send us a screenshot. Show us a bit of a transaction in it. You know, just downloading and just staying with it there doesn't help anyone, right? So no, just show no, us no. something. Use do it something. for heaven's sake. Use, Use it. it. Just try it out, okay? Yes. And then Give we'll, it a spin. we'll add you 2,500 into that account. Mm -hmm. Senior. So that you can spin a little more. Simple as that. Yes. Simple. Since you have given Joseph, we should give Mary also. <laughs> Mary, <laughs> we don't only hear you. We see you. We see you. <laughs> download it. Oh, I download Loop. Yeah. Once you've downloaded it, mm? transact, mm. screenshot. Mm. The rest, as we have said, is easy peasy. Okay. Mm. I'm on it. Very good. Mm. We are still in this conversation, yes. you know, on um, how we then link every knowledge, beast of knowledge that we have yeah. into actual realization of programs that make sense that means something. In these many years, since 2004, when you started AIH, yes. AIHD, what have you seen in terms of uh, difference? Is it communities that did not know? Is it um, because that we, we've, had, we've had arguments coming from people, especially politicians, that if I put my budget on preventive, people do not see what preventive yeah. it is. Mm -hmm. And somebody else goes and builds a hospital. The guy who builds a hospital gets more mileage than this one who decided that, yo, I'm putting my money into cutting grass, into draining swamps, into all those, doing all those things. Is it a lack of knowledge by the people or lack of connection? Or is it, why is this? I'm still trying to figure out what's our problem. Yeah, it's a big question. I think um, politicians are one segment mm. of players in this. And then um, the administrators, the decision makers within the health system are another player. You have the NGOs, you have the communities themselves. And so I think is um, uh, a meeting of minds at some point where we've, we consider uh, prevention and health promotion as key uh, strategies. And I think we've come around. We are beginning to recognize a lot more the value of prevent prevention mm. especially when it comes to um and we've seen a bit more of this within the ncd space yeah. uh, the non-communicable space yeah. where um screening is getting a little bit more um uh, normal normalized in some settings where people living with ncds have really come up as a group to begin to encourage other people to to um adapt uh, more preventive lifestyles we've seen um um especially in urban areas um when i when you wake up a bit early like you come here very early you'll see a lot of people now taking up physical activity mm -hmm. so mm. at an individual level we are seeing a, a lot more um consciousness towards a uh, healthy living but the other challenge we're having is now increased access to um, poor quality foods. Mm. We 
buy air for children, those yellow things in packets. We are a little bit more. What are, what are those? <laughs> those little yellow things you you buy for children in the supermarkets, those crisps and other things. Oh, that are full of air. It's, 80% it's just full air. Of air. It's 80% air. Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> Potatoes. So, <laughs> so those those really are those are some of the challenges we're beginning to see mm. that are permeating our diets, mm. especially for young people that are potentially harmful yeah. for health. So uh, so you've seen some positivity, but when it comes to, if you're looking at the risk factors for non-communicable non diseases, you're seeing um, an uptake of physical activity, but we are also seeing a decline in terms of access to quality food, um, diets, um, and then alcohol use has just gone up also, mm. Mm. Um, new products within the tobacco space. And so um, the prevention agenda really needs to, 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 to be stepped up so that we can control what needs to be controlled from right. a population level. And some of these things I could say I'll stop smoking, but it's not a population um, activity. It's a very individual action. And so from a population level, we need to look at some of these risks, some of these drivers to these diseases and act on them collectively. Right. So we see um, um, Senator Muma has um, a, a bill on tobacco mm. and uh, especially the new products within the tobacco space. Mm. Um, we are still grappling, uh, Eric, with advertising of alcohol. Mm. The billboards in this country are just everywhere you go. Uh, somebody's dancing with um, somebody and they're taking um, serious alcohol. I mean, what are we doing? What are we communicating to children? Mm. Um, so there is there are gains and we but we're experiencing quite a bit of losses Mary, you asked a question yes the budget that we have for prevention yes the 10 years ago there was a study done in the same home bay county by a certain lady by the name of professor emerson onono okay she is now the deputy director general at Cambridge. ICCM, Integrated Case Management, yeah. Integrated Community Case Management, ICCM. They were trying to determine something very simple, how it is you could train community health volunteers to be able to diagnose and treat malaria, pneumonia, diarrhea. Yes. Okay. They trained 2,600 community health workers. Study took place three to four years. They were paying these community health volunteers a stipend of 2,000 shillings. Per what? Per month. Because mm -hmm. the volunteers were just within their setting. just was just to help you move around. 2,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. Okay. The understanding was after the study was finished, the county government would be able to take over to pay just the 2,000. Okay. Now, what is of interest is just the numbers that they saw. The sum total was they actually prevented hospital attendance by 75%. Yeah documented meaning it worked we now have people we call community health promoters oh, yes who are trained the same 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 uh department the same same center that uh Maritana belongs to in kemri also had a care and treatment program called the faces program now they trained community health workers they even had a curriculum for training them and the understanding of how it is you can actually get lay people yeah. to understand just fundamentals that don't necessarily need you to go to medical school, okay? The cost of maintaining these people was minuscule. The county of Amabay was not able to pay the 2,000 to keep these people, and they were trained. Yeah. Maybe now with the community health promoters that have come up, maybe they've been engaged, but they were all over. So that cost is not something that anybody can tell you they can't afford. There is argument in terms of sustainability. Really? That is the argument. Mm. There has been an argument. But I think the Kenya government now is paying... No, no. Uh, Mary, yes. I know the argument. Yes. I've heard it. Yeah. Sustainability. Yes, that's the argument. If it is the lamest, weakest, lopsided argument I've ever come across, for a simple reason, 
you are looking at just the aspect of reducing people who actually come to hospital for this costly care. Not even complicated. At 2,000 bob a pop. So the, the, the city, the, the disconnect is the cost effectiveness. Mm -hmm. Have we really sat down and said, if we pay the community health promoters 2,000 a month, oh, that was 10 how much? Ago. No. The disconnect now from a policy making perspective, I agree with you. It's cost effective to have health community health promoters or health workers being the first point of call for communities in terms of prevention, in terms of early diagnosis. That that argument is done. We know. But have we said if we do that at a national level, this is how much we'll prevent, this is how much we'll save from actually direct funding of health facilities. Is that really that argument is there. However, our funding, our health financing model is basically aligned towards curative. It and is, that is the It is gap. purposefully yeah. aligned yeah. towards curative. Why? By who? By the merchants? No. no. Is it commercial interests? It is commercial interests, but mm -hmm. it isn't by the merchants. It is by the policy makers. Because as Mary is speaking, I'm asking myself, mm. <laughs> if you have a study that has shown you that it stopped seventy five percent of those who would have gone to hospital did not go did hospital. not go surely is it difficult to cost that, to saving? Cost that saving is it is it really difficult it but, is not difficult but mm. city now the government is actually um, uh, supposed to pay uh, community Primary. health promoters mm. two thousand yes. shillings a month yes. That was 10 years ago. We are still paying them 2,000 shillings today. But it's something. Okay. If we pay it consistently, mm. if you pay it long term, and you are, um, it's predictable for them. You see, the problem we have is this government will come in and say we'll pay uh, every month 2,000. <clears> will the next government continue that? Will we stop? Are all counties committed to doing this? I, we do... Um, mass drug administration for schistosomiasis and uh, soil transmitted ailments. We use community health promoters. So in the past we've been paying. But are we now saying that because we have community health promoters, we can use them to distribute these drugs, which will make it cheaper and easier for us to access communities without having to pay extra to uh, ensure that these programs run. That is the challenge. Um, so, maybe but where, maybe where exactly is the challenge? Because what you're saying, in an essence, yes. seems to answer the question that is being asked. So, where exactly do you say the I, challenge? I think is? The, the challenge f has always been yes. in the long term. Yes. Can the counties commit? Do they have resources to do no, this? No, do they have the will? In the long term, do they have the will? Mm -hmm. Do they have the will? But at the same time, we know our country. Would they have the resources to commit long term? Okay. They will to commit long term. Sure. Um, and uh, I think it continues to, we continue to ask these questions. We know it's beneficial. We know for human beings, if you prevent, then you are also preventing ill health among people. You are, you are also building the human uh, capacities in this country. But where is the gap? Is it not a composite, though, Mary, of all no. of these things? That when you talk about um, priority making, when you talk about will, whether it's a political goodwill, uh, whether you talk about the availability of resources, yeah. it's composite of all of these yes. things. But then I struggle to be at a place whereby, again, I mean, I think the very one of the very first things that you've said has really stuck in my mind today. And I say, no, that we should not be there today. Yeah. We should not. And that uh, availability of resources has usually been, the has carried the burden for what willpower and priority making should actually carry. Yeah. That unavailability of resources has been, you know, the scapegoat for what the responsibility should be placed on these other two things. But really, we have a lot of the burden of healthcare being shouldered by, by external parties. Yes. Uh, by private organizations. Yourself. By donors. By, by donors. donors, yeah. Until government, sorry to say, maybe not sorry, has gotten <laughs> comfortable yeah. with not prioritizing something like healthcare. 
look at some of the you know diseases that you speak of, which some countries forgot about Many decades ago, ago. Yeah. that we're still dealing with today. Mm -hmm. And that should not be the case. But then we blame it on this uh, poster child of unavailability of resources. resources. Yeah. But it should not be the case. So the question is, do we really feel that nations, especially on this side of the, of the, of the divide, do we really feel that nations can actually take the burden that healthcare poses on society and deal with it? Yes. Can we? I think I'm convinced we can. Um, and um, over the years, I know for the diseases which we are interested in, mm -hmm. we're really donor dependent. Mm. That's the challenge in this country. Um, our health budget has been around 7% uh, for a long time, national health budget. Um, we signed mm -hmm. off Abuja for 15%. Mm -hmm. We've never reached um, the 15%. Uh, do we have the resources to do this? Yes. Uh, can we do this? Yes. Uh, what amount of wastage within the health system? Again, the figures differ, but it's documented that of the money we get, a big proportion of it is not used. Mm. At the end of the year, um, some of it is wasted within the system. And so we just feel that um, if... All stolen. We put... All stolen. Mm. If we put our act together, <laughs> we can do better. Eric. Have you engaged with mind. governors? Yes. Um, all the work we do, we work with governors. Okay. And, uh, when you sit across the table with governors, let's say, you know, the Committee on Health or just individual governors, what do you read from them? What is their perception of the needs for health and the needs to direct investment in health? I th when you speak to individuals, they recognize the need. And I may, um, I'll be quick to say some counties have started putting resources, especially with neglected tropical diseases. We work in Kakamega, um, Busia, uh, Kakamega, Transoia, Vihiga, and Bungoma. They have now allocated funds for neglected tropical diseases. Um, it's 10% um, of the expenses uh, towards distribution of the drugs. Some counties actually now procuring praziquantel for schistosomiasis as part of their essential drugs. So we are beginning to see a recognition of the fact that this is a county problem. Mm -hmm. We need to see more where counties are deliberate in terms of allocating resources for the health of their own people. Mm -hmm. So we are now focused on domestic resource mobilization, which means uh, just having conversations with county governors, showing them the burden of disease. And some of these diseases, like uh, soil transmitted helmets, people really didn't think it was a big issue. When we were growing up, you have mignon, you continue. Mm. But when you begin to see how it affects learning, um, retention in schools mm -hmm. and all those things, then county governments are beginning to appreciate the need to invest in them. Mm -hmm. We need to see more of that. We need to see um, uh, more attention to um, water and sanitation. We have 11 uh, sub-counties that still have trachoma. We can deal with this. We can eradicate trachoma in 2024. Uh, we can eradicate um, soil transmit, mignon. We can eradicate um, uh, schistosomiasis if we are focused on prevention. Mm -hmm. And the key prevention areas for those diseases is water and sanitation. And can, can we not really, look at it, that, I'm sorry, but <laughs> I, can we not have running water? Can we not have we can. latrines? We can. We can. can we, we can. not have treated boreholes that will have piped water? We can. can we not have treated uh, pans? Can we not? Can we, we not? Can. We can. We can. What is the problem, City? Why? why the what? reader. For me, it's the will. You know why? When you work with government entities mm -hmm. and you see the movement of the change of one head of a government entity, like, say, a county and another, and you see changes and you ask, did these people get a special uh, allocation for funds? No, we get this allocation every year. So you, see, you start wondering, so what has been happening in the other years if this allocation was available? Mm. Because this isn't a secret. That money is never used. Even though what is allocated first is never used for what it's intended. That's mm. number one. Never. 
it is the reason why the auditor general year in and year yeah. out keeps pointing out to billions of shillings billions yeah. simply not being accounted for the math that i was doing about the 2600 workers eh? yes at 2000 shillings the sum total per month comes to 5 million 200 5.2 million yes you're telling me a county that has six a uh, six billion budget cannot afford five million two hundred abana come on abana that one no 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 when that when you look at the travels that we keep talking about they're in the hundreds of millions priorities and precisely yes. so the question you asked why well, I'm, I'm just summing it by saying the will you see if there's no will there'll be no priority it's true okay there are people in the Ministry of Health whose area of speciality is costing. Yes. They can break this thing down to you to a T. So they know. It's not that they don't know. They do know. You have health economists who can prioritize these things for you and tell you and show you with great clarity what must be done. What level of influence in decision making do those people have? Because it's the people who know. Yeah. Yes. are not the ones who make the decisions. No. They will pass in a paper and it will be among the very many They do what they're supposed to do and yeah. then they hand it over. They hand yeah. it over. And yeah. the person who's making a decision looks at this and says, Minyo, ah, Minyo. If I invest in Minyo, I'm insulting my people. You know someone is looking at it politically. Yes. If I said we are running a Minyo program in my county, or jiggers. people will be yes. saying, ha, 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 ha. Iyo ni county ya Minyo. And the politician is not willing to be the one who's painted that way. Yeah. Or just not understanding and seeing the connection between the Minyo, the jiggers, and the disease burden. Or maybe they, they see it and they see that will make people keep coming and that will make me keep spending Eric, money on, on People cure. in those positions of authority have a priority. They all want to become either millionaires or multimillionaires. Ah. They don't want to start businesses. They want to see how much they can pilfer. It's really not complicated. And everything they do, and that's why they put up buildings, because with buildings you can hype the, the cost, you can do all manner of things with it. And then they want to buy big equipment. Again, you can do all manner of things with it. And yet what you need is something so basic and which doesn't really cost that much. So, and then someone prefers, gives you an argument and says, you see, we are looking. Man, you're given the runaround. Since independence, what we are seeing is a moving backwards. No, 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 yeah. no, not even meeting the needs of what we have. Yeah, yeah. You know, this community health that we talk about, mm. there used to be people, there were people, public health practitioners, who'd come around to make Every sure home. that yeah. malaria, nini. Mm. Mm. Local health. The, yes. <laughs> they're called <laughs> extension, <laughs> extension, <laughs> yeah, well, they're called extension officers. Yeah. <laughs> but oh. I, I think for me, um, as we move forward, mm. if we focus on the right investments, we need facilities, we need hospitals. But if we focus on prevention, as um, City has said, we can deal with almost... We'll sort out everything. We'll sort out a lot of the health problems so that we focus on when they get to a hospital, yeah. how best can we attend to them without having everybody come to the health facility. If you can deal with what he said, 75% yes. of the issues we'll at the community level. Things. And the African Institute for Health and Development is really focused mm -hmm. at community level. Tops up um, our conversation this morning. Maybe. And Thank you very much for it. Yes. We'll be talking about policy formulation for poverty, health and social protection with our guest, Dr. Mary Nyamongo. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Amuyunzu now? Amuyunzu Bwana. Amuyunzu Nyamongo. She's the founder, director, and technical advisor at uh, the African Institute for Health and Development. 8 a.m. News time. Thank you. Every